Here we are looking at a high voltage supply or an HD supply for a valve power amplifier. Um, and I need somewhere around 440 volts. Um, maybe, I think I need maybe about 160 milliamps, but I'm, I'm rounding that up here. Um, that's for the main power stage. And then there's a few other stages here that have got a, a somewhat lower voltage, but much lower current. Um, so we need the three supplies in total. And then we need a negative uh, supply uh, to bias the valves. So we'll look at that. And the classic way to do this is, you, you know, you've got your uh, transformer and then your rectify and uh, filter. Uh, and normally we're using a, a CLC filter here. And we find to, f to filter 50 hertz is a challenge if you're using a a uh, discrete filter like this. And so we can see that we've got a huge inductor here, 10 Henry's. Um, normally we're dealing in micro Henry's or milli Henry's, but this is full 10 Henry's. And uh, this is what it looks like kind of thing. You know, you've got something here that's uh, about two and a half kilos. It's maybe 10 centimeters cubed. Uh, it's got a, quite a high DC resistance, so it's lossy. Um, it's just just quite quite a cumbersome thing to, to be dealing with. Um, uh, so this is kind of this is the traditional way it's done, and we're going to tr see if we can do things a little a little better. Uh, and what happens traditionally again for the sort of subsequent stages, these lower current stages, is that usually there's just a series resistor. And then we're, we're kind of relying on the current that's being drawn to, to give us the voltage drop to where it needs to be. And that seems a bit precarious to me. You know, if you remove your load, for example, or, or the load changes, then your voltage is going to change dramatically. And that seems a bit questionable. It's been done for years. All the early stuff was done like this. And uh, maybe even some of the modern uh, commercial uh, amplifiers are done like this. But we'll see what we can do. So as opposed to using these huge big inductors, then I'm, I'm going to look at a capacitor multiplier circuit. And this, this circuit, say, it's, it's a bad description really for this kind of circuit. I mean, the theory is that uh, we've got some capacitance that's value is multiplied by the current gain of a transistor. And you'll, you'll see it described like this, but uh, it's, it's just a bit confusing. And you could, you could associate this term with other, other different circuits. Um, Essentially what it is, is a buffered RC filter. And so if we look at the schematic here, we've got our rectifier and reservoir as we had before. But then we've got these resistors here uh, and this capacitor. So this point here is filtered via this RC combination. And so we, we you know, we're going to get rid of a whole load of ripple there. Um, the issue is that we can't pull any current from that point. And so what we can do is use a transistor uh, to, to buffer that. And this, I'm showing a source follower here. There's nothing to stop you using a, a you know, a, a bipolar transistor. I'm using a FET here because we're dealing with high voltages and it's easier to get high voltage FETs than it is for bipolars. Uh, so that's the deal, this RC circuit, um, and we just buffer it there. And we should see much reduced ripple on this point here. And we can also kind of use this as a, a soft start to a certain extent. You know, this time constant of, of RC here is going to ramp up that 440 volts. Uh, so we'll look at this, we'll look at this kind of arrangement. Let's first have a wee look at uh, the uh, simulation of this thing, though. Uh, and if we run our simulation, uh, so the green trace here is a rectified mains. Uh, and then the blue trace is after the uh, after the FET, so this is our output. And if we zoom in, what we find is we've maybe got about five volts a ripple uh, on the, the the sort of input supply. Uh, and then if we look at our filtered output here, we're down about 50 millivolts, maybe 30, 40 millivolts there. Uh, so big, big improvement in that uh, uh, ripple. And so that should be good for our main power section. Uh, so let's go and take a look at the circuitry. So here's our circuitry. Um, and I've done this old school. I've made a, made a dedicated PCB for this. And I've done it old school method, uh, drawing the traces and uh, put, 
putting in the H tank. It's a simple board, so that, that method's good enough. Um, now normally for a breadboard you can just tack the parts together and do some measurements, but given the voltages we're talking about here, that's maybe not the wisest uh, way forward, so we've done this particular board. And I've got a two-stage RC filter here to give us uh, even better rejection than we saw in the simulation. And I don't have a, an appropriate resistive load at the moment, so I've just connected up a light bulb here, so we'll see how that works. Um, and obviously for the voltages we're talking about, I'm going to need a step-up transformer, uh, which I don't have as yet. Um, but uh, given the voltages we're talking about, um, maybe I can just go ahead and plug this in and we'll see how it behaves. Well, not quite. Um, what we're going to do is connect, we'll plug in certainly, but we're going to plug in here to an isolation transformer. And uh, that isolation transformer has been driven by a variac here. So we can uh, ramp up the volts from zero to wherever we want to be operating. Uh, so all very safe. And the, the isolation transformer allows us then to connect our scope wherever we, <coughs> wherever we want to. Uh, to make our measurements. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we are all connected up then and uh, you can see in the DMM we're just short 100 volts on the output. Light bulbs beginning to light and 2 volts of division on the scope I've got about 5 volts of ripple and bearing in mind that the resistance of that light bulb would be quite low at this point just because it's not at full voltage. Um, so let's just wind up the voltage and uh, we'll uh, see what happens to that ripple. You can see the voltage is rising slowly there, that's uh, just the effect of the capacitors charging up. Um, so that's kind of the soft start function I was kind of describing during the simulation there. Um, yep, so there we are, uh, 230 odd volts, it's good enough. And uh, one, two, three, four, four and a half. So I've got about nine volts of ripple at this point. So uh, I'll move my scope to the output and we'll see what ripple we've got there. Um, so here we are with a scope connected to the output on my circuit then. And uh, we're just over 100 volts here. 50 millivolts of division now. And I've got a bit of junk here, which is just a bit of a nuisance for this measurement. This is just junk in the on the bench here, uh, but clearly a significant reduction. We went from like 5 volts and we're now sort of, uh, you know, 25 millivolts maybe on the peak of this uh, junk here and it's not, this is not even 50 hertz ripple. So we'll uh, crank our volts up again and you can see the DC offset shifting as the capacitor and the scope's charging up. Um, but there even this is going to ramp up to be about the 240 volts I would imagine and we can see this is settling down to near zero um, and I can't see any you know I can't see ripple beyond the junk there so that seems to be in quite a good place okay so this seems to be working uh, quite well and we can see the ripples down to pretty much nothing there um, and my, my thinking originally was to use this actual board in an amplifier and then to derive the lower voltages just with a with a series resistor as we saw in the more traditional uh, method. Um, and what I've kind of decided having gone through this though is that uh, I think I want to do a dedicated PCB and then we'll, uh, we'll cascade a number of these capacitor multipliers to give us our different voltages. So I'll go ahead and do some work on that and we'll come back uh, once we've got a proper board to do that job. Sometime later then, and I've got these boards back, um, and what I've done here is a four stage uh, a circuit, four stages of capacitor multiplier. Um, and the first two stages are just in series um, to give me the 440 volts. Uh, I found that gives a better result than the sort of two stage RC filter. Uh, so a little bit more uh, voltage drop, but it uh, just gives the edge on the ripple. And then the next stage drops down to 400 volts, and the last stage down to 170. And these voltages will be uh, constant, really, regardless of load, uh, pretty much anyway. Uh, and of course I can change the voltages just by changing resistors here. 
And uh, the thing I like about having all this in the one board is all our high voltages are in the one area. You know, they're not sort of stringing around the chassis of the amplifier. Um, and so that's uh, just a bit more comfortable from the safety point of view. Obviously, we've got to take these voltages to the points of use, but uh, they're not sort of uh, via sort of resistors floating around in the, the uh, chassis somewhere. Um, and you can see I've got some slots in the board where we've got uh, some of the higher voltages um, just to uh, keep the keep the creepage distance up. And I've moved to using film capacitors for the first couple of stages and that's just because the electrolytics were a bit leaky. Um, and so of course I've built one up and uh, here we are. So quite happy with how that's say uh, how it went together anyway. Um, so let's go, we'll put some power on this and uh, make some measurements and see how this one behaves. So this is some time later again and uh, I've now got a custom transformer for this uh, project here. Uh, and I've only recently discovered Tiger toroids in the UK, so that's where this came from. Uh, and just need to give them a mention because the, the service I had was just outstanding. Uh, so very happy with that. And I've got four windings on this. I've got the secondary uh, going into our HT board here, it's about 350 volts. And then I've got uh, uh, somewhere about 50 volts for this bias supply. And I've got a couple of 12 volt lines that will be used in the future. Uh, and then I've got some loads on my, my board here. So I've, I've got a load on the uh, 440 volts representing the, our valves. Uh, running at full bias, uh, so they're running away there. I've got a little fan to keep them cool, and then I've got another load here on my uh, lower current output just to measure that. Um, so let's just we'll just measure some voltages on this and uh, see how we're looking. So looking at our voltages then, uh, and uh, if we just look at across our load resistor here, here's my 440 volts, absolutely bang on. Uh, and then if I measure my 400. Again, just a volt, a volt astray there, and the 170, couple of volts high. I mean, that's that's good enough for what we're looking for there. So very happy with how that's uh, sitting. Obviously, these voltages will vary a little bit um, as the as the mains voltage goes up and down, and uh, depending on our exact load. Um, but working all very well there, and I can't. I can't sensibly measure the ripple in the output of this. Uh, it's just too low to to really. Uh, I'd have to work hard to actually make a decent measurement. Um, but if I measure the AC voltage across this thing, we see it uh, drops down there as the capacitor and the DMM charges up, and we're down there at sort of three three millivolts. And this is this is a four hundred and forty volt DC supply, and this is the. This is the uh, level we've got. And we can see it's moving around a little bit there. And that's just because of the fluctuation in the mains voltage. It's just moving up and down a little bit. Um, so very happy with that. And again, if we measure, let's look at the 170 here. And this should come down and be very stable. And really, this is just at the noise floor of the DMM here. Uh, uh, so very very happy with that. This is it's, it's a very very clean supply now. Not a regulated supply, but very clean and, uh, and probably more so than it needs to be. But of course we're we're just pushing the boundaries here, uh, and so this should give us a good building block for our, our amplifier. Uh, and I'm I'm tempted to I keep, I keep being tempted to sort of stick my fingers on these transistors and see if there's any temperature rise. But of course these are all sitting at 400 odd volts. Um, but um, th there's nothing, there's nothing untoward in the temperature there, just a little bit of warming. Same in the transformer, it's just there's a gentle heat coming from that, so it's not like some of the stuff we've seen before where things are just, you, you know, you can't go near them. And it's absolutely silent as well, so this is what we want for our uh, amplifier. Uh, so uh, that's... Um, that's our HD supply building block and we can put that to the side. Um, now I did mention that uh, we had a bias supply uh, here as well so we'll just take a quick look at that. If we just bring this in here, I've already got this connected up, I'm not going to show this in too much detail. Um, so this is meant to give us some minus voltage that we can vary uh, and it's just a linear regulator. Uh, and uh, I've got some adjustments on the back of the board here. Uh, and uh, 
So that allows us to set the bias and also set the balance between the two different, uh, it'd be a push-pull output arrangement in the valve. So that lets us set the, the balance in these two. So the idea is that this will be, uh, uh, I'm watching how I touch this obviously, because I've got some high voltages kicking around here and it's, it's running. Um, so this will be secured to the chassis uh, via some standoffs and then the, the, the adjustments will be screwed or adjusted from the outside. Uh, uh, so that's, that's why the variable resistors are on the back there. Uh, and uh, this is working quite well as, as well. If we measure our voltage on that, uh, I've got minus 40 volts on that. And I say we can tweak that within the bounds that we're interested in. Uh, so that's our sort of third building block here. Uh, and so again, we'll put this to the side now and we'll come back a bit later when we've got some other parts to put an amplifier together.